good evening, this is Hanok Steve coming to you on the 16th of January. And Theresa May, oh my God, the uh, Teflon-coated Theresa May. And uh, of course, uh, toxic masculinity. What can we say about that? Uh, well, those are the two stories I want to tackle tonight. Uh, so just to put these in the context, uh, Theresa May is of course a popular story these days with Brexit and the no confidence vote. And of course, toxic masculinity uh, has been brought to the foreground by the Gillette All You Can Be ad that has recently been played on uh, and actually going viral on YouTube. But uh, first, let me welcome you all back. And uh, incredibly, we are moving towards 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, this is absolutely fantastic. And, and thank you so much for joining me on this journey because as you can see, things are changing by the day. It is absolutely incredible. Uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, bring information that is of benefit to you and your family so that you can act accordingly and um, yeah, make sensible decisions as I have to in the real world. I mean, that's what this is all about. I live in the real world and I know that you live in the real world. And so um, I find myself you know, when I look around, there just isn't a lot of people talking about real world situations. And uh, so how can you make a decision when nobody really wants to discuss all of the issues? Uh, let's first go and take a look at these two clips and then I'll come back and we'll have a quick wrap up. OK, here we go. OK, so here we go. Axios, Theresa May survives no confidence vote. After a day after her Brexit plan suffered the worst parliamentary defeat in modern British political history, UK Prime Minister Theresa May has survived a motion of no confidence brought by Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn by a vote of 325 to 306. There you go, 19 votes. I told you it would be close. I told you it would be close, but that she would survive. And... Um, Yes, it's just too uncertain to um, go against Theresa May right now. So I'm sure she is looking pretty chuffed. She's looking pretty chuffed. White matters. Uh, May's job has been under threat for months, and yet she keeps on surviving. Having already seen off one challenge from rebels in her own party, she's now defeated a motion from the opposition. Still, May is no closer to delivering on Brexit, with 10 weeks left until the UK is scheduled to leave the European Union. Uh, well, good on you. This is great. Like I say, uh, but there will be um, there will be negotiations with Ireland over the border issues, and the Brexit will go ahead. And this is the first chink in the armour of the globalist European Union. So here is the uh, Gillette ad: a "Be all you can be," and. Uh, yeah, I am just stunned at the negative, negative you know, I <laughs> I just who does that? Who does that? Oh, who does that? Come on. That's not really what it looks like, folks. Anyway, I'll be getting into this more uh, in uh, the next little section. But uh, the real telling piece is right here. Uh, 350,000 likes, 735,000 dislikes. And I always like the comments. Uh, thanks for the moral advice multinational company that was recently caught profiting off forced child labor and price fixing. My wife's boyfriend loves this video. Isn't his the company that charges more for girls' raises? I mean, sometimes you get more out of the comments than you do out of the video. Wow, they keep removing dislikes. That's suspect. Stop using virtue signaling to sell products. Here, here. Why aren't men shown in this absurd video from countries, races and cultures that actually abuse and repress women on a grand scale? Oh, that's right. It wouldn't fit the narrative. Good comment.
Congrats, Gillette. You win this week's Social Justice Warrior Award. Unfortunately for you, you've also alienated at least half of your customer base. Bye-bye. Always read the comments. So as I predicted yesterday, uh, Theresa May would win the confidence vote. Uh, it would be a squeaker, and it was. It was, uh, what, 22 votes uh, she, that she won by. Uh, but this will basically throw everything into deadlock. Uh, the EU have dug its heels in and uh, refused to negotiate further. Uh, I think from here on in, the Conservative government will uh, basically deal with the island border issues and the EU and that kind of stuff. And uh, we will basically be in deadlock until we go into Brexit. And uh, from there on in, well, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, I think uh, you know my predictions from the other night that uh, I believe that after going over this bump and being forced to negotiate in different ways, uh, that Britain will be pleasantly surprised that it actually flourishes rather than diminishes. And as long as it can start recognizing the right of the public and the power of the public. Uh, right now I just see an absolute abuse of that taking place at all levels of government. Uh, they seem to think that they can act without the input of the public or without concerning themselves about public wishes and uh, that I'm afraid is not going to work as we well see. So toxic masculinity, you know, like I just did a quick flick onto that video by Gillette, uh, Be All You Can Be, which actually is quite insulting if you look at it. But um, more than that, it, it concerns me that they really, and I mean, you know, the, the, the left wing, third wave feminism, whatever you want to call it, uh, have not got how to use propaganda. And I use the term propaganda in reference to anything uh, in which you use to want to persuade people to see things in a different light, whether that be good or bad. Okay, so I have seen so many movies and shows just lately, especially on Netflix, uh, that get into this virtue signaling and it just does not work. This ad is all about virtue signaling because toxic masculinity does not work like that. Okay. Uh, and also to portray that it's mostly a white issue, uh, I, I find really insulting, not just because I'm a white guy, but because, you know, toxic masculinity goes across all races. Okay, it's not just assigned to one particular race. And as we move further and further and further into the 21st century, you see less and less of toxic masculinity. I mean, you know, you talk about the rights of women. Here we have Theresa May, Prime Minister of England. Do we really care whether she is a woman or not? Absolutely not. I care whether she can do the job. Okay, that is the most important criteria. And so where this toxic masculinity ad is really lacking, you know, when you present it like that, it just is an affront. It is a slap in the face. Now I'm going to give you an example of a movie that really had an impact in this world. And that's not just my opinion. Uh, I've seen uh, Quentin Tarantino interviewed by uh, many colored people about the movie Django Unchained. And all of the colored people basically said thank you, thank you, thank you for portraying slavery and a black person's plight throughout history as it really happened. Okay, so what Quentin Tarantino knows is he tells three stories at the same time. The first story is about Django seeking his partner. The second is about um, Christoph Waltz uh, as the bounty hunter who's looking for bounty and, um, you know, befriends Django. And of course, it's such an interesting counterpoint to Inglorious uh, Bastards, uh, also by uh, Quentin Tarantino, uh, because he plays a, uh, a quite a different role in that situation. 
So you see these two stories unfolding and they're good stories. You know, they're gripping stories. They interest you. You can feel for these each of these individuals uh, and, and their desires and, um, you know, the way uh, Christoph Waltz and accepts Django as an equal. And he pays no accord to the whole idea of black people being less than white people. Okay? Uh, so you've got all of this going on, and then you add to the mix in the background, you're seeing real slavery and what slavery really looked like. And that idea goes into the side of your head right here. And that's where changes are made. It's not by this, you know, insulting kind of commercialism. And, you know, Procter & Gamble, who own Gillette, are no saints themselves. They have been in many scandals about slave labor, about the use of palm oil, uh, about low payment, about uh, evasion of taxes. I mean, the, th this is uh, basically an unsophisticated virtue signaling opportunity to make money at the expense of men. Now, as I say, you know, we live in a situation now, maybe I should explain what, you know, what I see things as, how I see this world. And it's interesting that I'm now 65 and I'm white, uh, but you know, when you reach this age, you get to a certain point where you've just seen so many things go past that regardless of what people say they are, the world in reality is a completely different space. Uh, so apart from all the obvious references to uh, you know white guys doing the toxic masculinity thing, uh, there's one particular situation uh, where there is a pretty young woman walking down the street and uh, there is a white guy who um, goes to make after her and the colored guy jumps out and says, uh, not good, not good. Well, what does he think was going to happen? It's a crowded street. I mean, I suspect that what he was going to do was run up alongside her and say, hey, how you doing? You doing anything tonight? You want to go on a date? Well, every situation I've seen like that, you know, if the woman goes, get the hell out of here, most guys back off immediately. I mean, let me tell you a little interesting story. Uh, this was just a few years ago, and I got together with uh, the Anglican minister, and uh, we wanted to do something in town here for the uh, the teens, because, you know, it's a village, it's, it's a small village, and there's not a whole heck of a lot going on. And uh, so we wanted to set up the um, some teen dances. Now, the, the regular teen dance was about to end, and we were going to take over responsibility for that. And uh, so anyways, um, it didn't, for one reason or another, it didn't uh, happen, but we went in with a questionnaire to ask the teens uh, what they wanted to do, what they were interested in, and so on and so forth. And uh, so we walked in there, and of course we're both about the same age group, and we're looking around, and we just look at each other, and it's like, remember when? So this is a scene. All the girls, are dancing in the middle of the floor. All the guys are ringing the outside of the arena. And they're all in little clumps of twos and threes, and they're talking to each other, and then they look into the crowd, and they talk to each other. And, you know, we're, we're both thinking like, why don't you just go and ask one of them for a dance? Like, how can it hurt? But this is just so reminiscent, you know, 40 years. And that relationship between men and women, this um, fear of refusal for a man. You know, I come from a time when the whole concept of flirting, you know, this is where men and women engage this back and forward um, sort of banter. And uh, it was enjoyed by both. So as I see the relationship between men and women is that, uh, you know, that yin and yang symbol that fits into a complete circle and each half is equally occupied by the same shape. However, one is black and one is white. One is male, one is female. And they don't try and fight with each other. They fit together perfectly and one makes up for the other. So a woman makes a man whole. 
and a man makes a woman whole. Uh, I mean, there is no doubt about it. I don't care what any feminist cares to tell you, that women prefer to do the softer things in life. They, they play that role. They're, they're mothers, they are nurturers, um, men want to protect, and all you know, all of the. I mean, this this is what makes me laugh about this whole situation is all of the things that we have, you know, the, the modern homes, all of the conveniences within the homes are to make the life of women easier. It's this protective nature in men, and you know, to try and completely wipe out toxic masculinity. You know. Let me just flip to another subject here. I was amazed when I read Young, and um, he got into the whole topic of ego. Okay, and where you know ego to its excess is a terrible thing. You can't completely eliminate it because ego is what gets you out of bed in the morning. Okay, this is the big motivator. This this is what makes you get up and go. And so whilst you might wish to get rid of com completely of toxic masculinity be careful of what you wish for yes toxic masculinity in excess is a horrible thing to see for both men and women okay but uh, we need to have that strength in men that gives them a strength of leadership because you know, may, maybe I'm going to speak out of turn here, and uh, oh my God, you know, you can you can uh, unsubscribe if you like, but look at all the roads and the houses, and the factories that built the cars and the mining operations, everything that has led to everything that we love in our society has been brought about by the aggressive nature of men, the want to go out there and conquer the wilderness and I mean, we need to reconcile our relationship with the wilderness I will completely agree with that and there are much better ways to do business and that's a whole other story that's all based on greed but you know if these things didn't happen where would we be would you like to be you know living in a cave somewhere uh, cooking over a uh, an open fire is that the kind of survival relationship you want to have with the world? Or do you want to live with uh, all modern appliances? And to do that takes cooperation between man and woman, male and female. We are both different energies and we both complement and create another energy between us in that, that tension that's created between a male and female personality. Uh, I think that we are moving in a wonderful direction anyways. I mean, I think that what this is doing is just alienating the whole thing. It's actually setting up conflict. It's not bringing people together at all. It's setting up conflict by insulting one's intelligence, whether you are male or female. Because even within each, each of those groups, let's say we have, you know, within a male group, there will be those males who are more female will will agree with that ad, and there are more and there are half males who will disagree with that ad, and the same with the female section. So within it within each group, and so within each group we are causing division. This is not good, my friends. We we have to get along together if we are going to fix any of the problems in this world today, and there are huge problems to be fixed. We have to be getting along together as people. And so, as I say, uh, you know, we have Theresa May as a leader in England. It looks like Marine Le Pen is going to take over from uh, Emmanuel Macron in France. And uh, kudos, more kudos to her. You know, same with Clinton. If she got elected, kudos to a woman. If she can do the job, just great. If you fall down on the job, because you put yourself on such a pedestal, expect criticism. That's all I'm saying is let, let's look at stuff um, in an open-handed and fair fashion towards all people. And I think that when we do that, and we are doing that, social media, all of these things are exposing us to all kinds of different ideas, different ways of doing things, and this is how society changes. 
this is how you don't you don't rub people's faces in it because when you rub someone's face in it you you sour the relationship and the relationship my friends is all we have whether it be men and men or men and women or women and women the relationship is all we have so let's nurture that let's think of that in the future and let's work together to solve some of life's bigger problems so if you've enjoyed this video please uh, like and subscribe below and uh, again thank you all for joining me on this journey please leave a comment i love to read all of your comments it's absolutely fascinating and um, we will talk to you very very soon see you now take care bye